Hi, uh, welcome to All Scale Slot Cars. I'm Dennis, and in this video, I'd like to touch on the proper way to ship and mail and package up a slot car and uh, to save some heartbreak. Hopefully, it's someone in the future, even if it's one person, if it saves from having to go through an ordeal of uh, a damaged item because uh, it wasn't shipped the right way. Uh, in not the right materials and stuff and uh, if, if it could save if this video can save one person that's fantastic and that would be both ends of that equation you know the the shipper and the re the receiver of that item now I'm gonna say slot cars in this video because I you know I love slot cars but you can whenever I say the word slot car you could substitute that for anything that's kind of fragile whether it be any kind of thing in the hobby like a a nature train or or a baseball card or an action figure or whatever you're sending or sh or shipping out um, you could substitute that term but for me I'm going to use the term slot car uh, because that's just my experience with this and um, yeah the, the proper way if somebody wants to Google if they're not familiar with how to do this and they're googling hopefully they come across this video or I don't even know if there's any others out there like this there probably are but if they come across this video and want to just learn how to package it up and the proper way to send it so things don't get damaged and um, if that can happen and that helps out someone that's fantastic and this video has done its job and I can rest at ease because I feel I've done my duty in helping get the word out there and um, I'm partially making this because of an experience I had now this goes back a couple of years I'm just discussing it now but I had um, I had seeked out this particular car it's an Aurora accelerator and I fell in love with it and it was beautiful and there were a couple of them online and I saw one for a certain price and then I saw another one and they were both about the same price but this one was listed as free shipping and I said okay that made the determining factor they were both in really nice condition and both about the same price but the free shipping as opposed to four or five US dollar shipping that made the swing for me I said okay I'm gonna go with this one and not thinking anything I knew everything was covered you know under what I was purchasing so everything was fine so a few days later I get a notification that a package has arrived on my porch so I get excited I open the front door and I'm looking around and I see no package and first thing that enters my mind of course in this crazy day and age is porch pirates and I said, oh, no, oh, no. But I checked the mailbox and I saw, you know, there are some letters, the normal letters. And there's this manila envelope in there. And so I said, OK, let me see what's in this manila envelope. So I open up the manila envelope and sure enough, it's this guy. And that's all it was in, a manila envelope and maybe just, I think, a little bit of bubble wrap surrounding it and taped around it. And that was it. And I said, oh, no. So I'm removing it from the package. And I said, I don't believe this. Um, so I took it out. And I, when I examined, I see, I don't know if you could pick it up there, but that post there, that window post is damaged. This was actually pushed down a little bit, some stress on top of it somewhere along the line. Uh, who knows where it happened? I'd like to know if it could talk. I wish it could tell me when did this happen? Was it somewhere at the beginning of its journey when it first was placed in the mailbox or the post office? Uh, was it somewhere along the line? Did a big box come and crush it and, uh, you know, just fell on top of it? Or did somebody toss it? What did it make it almost all the way intact? And then the mail carrier, who through no fault of his or hers, because they wouldn't be aware of it, it wasn't marked fragile on the manila envelope, they wouldn't know to, to be you know, very careful when placing this. Maybe they crunched it up with the other mail when they put it in the box, and that right there, that very last second of delivery, is what did it. So <laughs> I, I, I don't know what happened. I wish it could tell me, but... Uh, that'll just have to go down as one of the great mysteries in, throughout history. And so regardless, I'm left with this. 
So um, thankfully, I knew I was covered. So I, I reached out to the to the seller and I, I took a picture and I showed them what had happened. And of course, they were very apologetic. And you could tell that it was a sincere apology. They they probably weren't used to sending these. They didn't know. I said, you know, this was like a 50 year old car, 40 or 50 year old car. And um, it's not right. It's not <laughs> practical to send it like that because it can easily just get crunched. And so they were very apologetic and they offered me a, a full refund. But um, I, you know, I looked at the car and th although it's, it's in bad shape now, it kind of ruins the value of it. Most of the value of it, the, the chassis still works good. The chassis ran fine. And I said, you know what? Um, the chassis runs, and I think, uh, if you don't mind, maybe if you can just uh, refund me half of the price. So this way, because half of it is good. The chassis is still good. The, the, the body, eh, I'll have to go out and reach out and find another one, which I, it's two years later, and I still haven't. But I got the refund, the half-off half refund, and everything was fine. So I, I'm not faulting the seller. They just weren't aware. So that's why I'm kind of making this video is to just raise some awareness for that. So, um, yeah, I got the refund for it. I'm happy. I can go out and get another car. But I just don't want to have this happen to something that's more rare. This isn't an, an, it's not an extremely rare car. So it's kind of easy to hunt this out. In time, I can pick up another one. But sometimes... Um, Sellers may be unaware that what they're sending is something extremely rare, extremely valuable, and maybe if they auctioned it, the auction didn't really show its true value. Sometimes things sneak through, and uh, so that's that's something right there. They might think, okay, this is you know a fifty dollar car, say. But in reality, you know, there's collectors out there that want to pay $500 for this. You never know when something like that happens. And it's a, it's a very unique item. And now it just got crunched. It completely pretty much ruined its value. And nobody, nobody is really, you know, aware of that. So always take precautions on whatever you're shipping. And I find the best way to do it. And now I'm coming from someone who's never actually sold anything <laughs> i'm i'm a classic uh non-seller everything i ever bought is probably still with me and will remain with me god willing for a while um and uh so i've never actually shipped anything um and anything slot car related i should say um, but from what I've received, I could tell the best methods and what's held up. And for the most part, everything is held up really well. But I could tell you, uh, if you have like, if you're dealing with an HO car, this kind of little plastic case is a nice little additive to the package. You could put, wrap the car in some, in tissue paper or some bubble wrap, lightly wrap it, and you could stick it in there and close the door and uh, maybe put a little piece of, piece of tape on it and send it away. And that, that is really good for a start. And then you can, you can get a box that's, it doesn't have to be a big box, a small box, even something, even half the size of this box works well. The small boxes, as long as it's still got its integrity, you don't want something that's very old cardboard, that's flimsy. But if, if the box is still kind of sturdy and strong cardboard, that could withstand a lot, even with something very heavy falling on top of it during the transportation. As long as you've got the car in something a little, you know, another little container like this and lots of bubble wrap all around it, just wrap all that in bubble wrap and, and fill this all up in here, whatever space you have, fill it up with bubble wrap, but not, I would suggest not tightly. Just a nice loose to give some play just in case, but not enough play to where cars are rattling around and stuff. Just enough little play just in case so some air can escape from that. So um, that's, that's what I find the best way to do it. If you have a, a more sturdier case to put the car into, like this one, that's almost impenetrable. Uh, 
I wouldn't say very, you know, completely, but almost. And that, that would be fantastic if you have something like that lying around or if that's cost effective for you to do something like that, you know, especially if you're sending off something very valuable. Um, also, um, before you put this in, I would um, put it in some sort of baggie, a Ziploc baggie or something that's, you know, pretty watertight, seal it up, you know, take the air out, seal it up and wrap that around just in case during its journey somewhere it falls into a puddle you never know or gets when the carrier's out in the rain and it's getting you know in his satchel and it's getting poured on and it's pooling up in the satchel all over that um, you have an extra layer of protection so that's just something to come, keep in mind too and the same goes for the larger scale cars um, of course you need a larger box for them um, and most, uh, if you're selling something that's in its own container, a car that's in its own container, there's usually a plastic container that came with the car, a new car in a plastic box. Uh, those are uh, susceptible to breaking that plastic case. Uh, so you may want something just maybe a little larger than this, but uh, you know, I've received plenty of boxes this size and things have come in very, very good shape. Uh, especially if they're wrapped around in bubble wrap or lots of newspaper um, and, and the same practices for, for what I was saying about that car. And um, if you have a new car that you're sending off, if it's, if it's, um, if it's strapped into its original container, that's fine. I wouldn't suggest opening that up if it's never been opened before. You don't want to break any seals. Uh, collectors are very, you know, adamant about that. Keep that seal intact. You don't want to damage anything. But if it's already, if the car's already been out of the case, um, I would, I would put in some, some um, packaging, you know, some plastic or or some tissue paper inside there and fill that gap up inside the case so the car isn't, you know, jostling around during transit. And that goes for any kind of car or anything. Um, so yeah, um, that's just a, a quick video that I wanted to do. I'm going on and on about it, but I just wanted to make sure that people were aware of what can happen. It could things could get a lot worse than this, and then there's a lot of heartache involved. And so thank you for watching, and uh, hope this helps. If it helps one person, I'm happy. And thank you very much. Take care.